It was breaking news yesterday that Elon said Twitter will charge users $8 for those who want blue verification tick by their name. I have a blue check mark and I'm more than happy to pay the $8 so I don't have any impersonators because they actually do a lot of harm to my audience. But a little bit that we need to talk about this tweet. So Musk criticized the old method as lords and peasants system. And then the method is a kind of important because it was introduced in 2009 after Twitter faced a lawsuit accusing it of not doing enough to prevent impersonators. And we're seeing today, I got a large following. I have so many impersonators. It is insane. Um, but basically paid users would have priority and replies and searches and half as many ads. So I don't mind paying $8 for a better user experience. But of course we had Vitalik that had to chime in. And then we also had CZ from Binance. Vitalik's commented on the blue check system saying that paying $8 and calling yourself whatever would damage the blue check anti-scam role. I disagree with him. And then CZ chimed in next when we also know that he did or that Binance did apparently invest approximately 500 million in Twitter under Elon Musk. CZ suggested Binance pay as a solution to crypto payments on Twitter. He said Binance wants to be supportive on anything that is to do with crypto or Web3 relating to Twitter. And we have all the tech, we know have the know-how, we know the products, so we're ready to help. And again, for clarity per the article, CZ hasn't met Musk yet. And I did comment under the thread of Elon Musk and say, will you be accepting Dogecoin? Because I kind of feel like Elon is going to troll and he's possibly <laughs> going to do it. Since Adam is laughing, I want to get your take on this whole fiasco. Well, it's not a fiasco, but this whole interesting story, because there's a lot of parts to it. Yeah, no, I uh, I can I, I agree with most of your take, Wendy. I, I continue to, you know, think that the thing that Musk is doing with Twitter it can only make the platform better. The platform has degraded substantially over the last half dozen years. Uh, it's become very, very politicized in ways that are very one-sided. And frankly, it's become a dangerous place to be, not because necessarily people are dangerous on it in a way that's different from what they were before, but because it's dangerous to have opinions that go against the orthodoxy and they go against sort of, you know, whatever the current narrative is, which we've seen over and over again over the last, you know, couple of years, is typically wrong. And we find out in hindsight that a lot of times the conspiracy theorists are actually the people who just had a better understanding of the data and didn't just trust the pronouncements from people who are trying to make themselves look good. As far as Vitalik's comment is concerned, I think, again, like, uh, it's, it's nice to be in the rarefied air of someone who is globally recognized as being an innovator, uh, you know, in the way that Vitalik is. He gets a lot of respect. And so for him, he kind of sees the, the, the downsides about a change to the system, but doesn't appreciate the weaknesses of the system today. I've been a journalist in disruptive technology for more than 10 years at this point, and I can't get verified. You know, I just submitted again, uh, you know, for the daily show that I do, which has been top three on tech news, uh, you know, for months and months at a time. Currently, I think we're number 12 or 13. Um, you know, on the Apple system right now with the Markets Daily Show that I do. And, you know, I fulfill all of the different criteria to be qualified as a journalist. I submitted all of the things. I've done this multiple times and you get a nice rejection. So I would very much like to pay $8 per month to actually be able to, I don't care about the blue check, but I'd very much like people to be able to understand who I am. I spend a lot of time removing spam and just like removing things where people have tagged me on and that becomes an insurmountable task at a certain point. So again, like the system as it stands right now, I completely agree with Musk's assessment. It's very much a lords and peasants type thing where if you know somebody at the company, you know, or you're very, very well known, well then it's, you know, it's kind of like a Wikipedia page, right? You can be notable, but still the editors on Wikipedia might not consider you or the project or whatever notable. And it becomes this kind of arbitrary power game. One other note is that although Twitter verified blue checks are something where you go through a verification process, you can change your name on an account. You know, that's it. It doesn't change your status. So people sometimes will find themselves with accounts and then they will change their name to impersonate someone else so that they then look like that other person. And again, like it, it's just, it's a, it's a stupid game that's been played in a stupid way for a long time. And anything that makes it less dumb, I will be very, very happy about. Back to you, Wendy. Um, the only thing I want to say is that if you ch actually change your handle, they will remove the check mark oh, from what okay. I've read on the terms of services. And it, it took me a really, really long time to get verified. It was an absolute pain, but I was able to do it. And I'm excited that other people are going to be verified. It's important. And hopefully it will reduce the spam on that platform. Because like you said, I spend, so I have a team member that he spends time going through the mentions and blocking people. It literally takes us hours to do it every day. And I get, I would be getting an average of 20 to 71 spam posts per post I make. Will, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. 
Yeah, I'm gonna be sad if things change. I kind of like the pleb uh, method of doing <laughs> things, right? I kind of like being a pleb. I kind of like being in that the frothy middle with everyone else, and then Wendy, you're above us, right? I think that's kind of fun. <laughs> I do think that this eight dollar integration doesn't tackle a lot of the problems they need, right? Just because you can pay eight dollars a month to get verified, that doesn't solve a civil problem where yeah, I can change my name to be someone else. It doesn't necessarily also change the bot problem, right? Like I think you would need almost everybody to KYC and pay money to get rid of the bot problem. The bot problem is that people can spin up as many accounts as they want, and then one central account is controlling all those bots, posting a bunch of random stuff, which is what you see under every single thing that has hashtag Bitcoin or hashtag MetaMask. That's what you see, and they can only change that if they implement some sort of civil resistance with like KYC, forcing everyone to make a small payment. That's maybe where crypto could come in handy here, but frankly, I don't know if there's any integrations yet that quite are large enough for Twitter. Twitter has well over 300 million users. That's a lot of people to go KYC through. That's a lot of people to get a dollar from, let alone $8 from. And I don't know if there's really any crypto payments that would be able to handle this right now. CZ in that article uh, that we just looked at did say that Binance Pay would be able to integrate with Twitter and help out. But I think that comes off as more of a shill for a product than something that's necessarily ready to bootstrap it. I mean, we don't quite have something that everyone is on top of. About 17% of Americans hold Bitcoin, according to surveys from last year. That's not that many people uh, and when, in comparison to people who have a Twitter account in the United States. So I'm, I'm waiting for more solutions and I'm not quite seeing them with this ad payment feature. Then again, it would be nice to get a check mark, I suppose. Adam, give it back to you for final thoughts. Yeah, I mean, two things here. One, as far as like uh, stuff making the experience better, I do think that that adding more value through something like the ability to verify that you actually are who you say that you are and are, are representing yourself to be will, uh, you know, and making that something that's available just broadly to anyone who thinks that it's important for them uh, because they're taking their presence seriously. They're, you know, they're actually representing themselves rather than just having a bot or a meme account. I think that that does wind up being important because I think this is the basis for creating filtered versions of the system where you can have effectively just the people who have been proactively verified uh, effectively talk to each other. And it's not to say that other people won't be allowed to be on the platform or you won't be able to see them, but it's to say that you'll have the choice. And I think that that choice will wind up being important for people like Wendy, who again, like spend a lot of time, you know, with team members and spend money there for like $8 to be able to filter, you know, that stuff out. Like that's really valuable. And so if this is the basis of that system, then I think it's really important. The, uh, just pivoting briefly to the CZ thing. Um, so yes, obviously it's a shill. Yes, obviously the reason why he's, uh, you know, they've chosen to invest is because it's good for business. It gets them in the news on something that's very kind of visible. And again, these these folks who are at the top of these uh, crypto companies are very good at figuring out how to leverage money in order to do that. The one question that I have, and just in terms of the practicality of integrating something like Binance Pay versus it just being kind of like a, a kind of one-off mention saying, hey, here's the thing, uh, you know, is... Binance is not a company that actually operates in the United States, and Twitter is very much a United States-based company. So to the extent that they could, they would integrate something like that, it seems much more likely to me that they'll partner with a company like Coinbase or something like that that is going to be on the right side of the law in the United States and can deal with U.S. clients uh, versus a company like Binance, where again, like I personally was kicked off of Binance because I'm a U.S. person. So that seems like that's a little bit of a, of a incongruity versus the kind of statement made there and makes me question a little bit what the motivation is. Wendy, I'll go to you for last thoughts. Um, I do, I kind of have to counter that a bit. And the reason why is because we do have Binance US. And mm, uh, they true. they are kind of like, they're not, I know they're kind of like a subsidiary Binance. Like I've never really been able to understand how that works. But I think that they could potentially do that through Binance US. But as far as the new system goes, like again, I don't mind paying the $8. I actually bought Twitter Blue yesterday. It's been a really great experience. I'm able to like archive my bookmarks, you know, look at different top trending news. But I think that what's going to end up happening is they're going to have to KYC everybody in order for that to happen. And the people that mm -hmm. do pay for, for Twitter Blue, they will probably have the option to only see um, comments from people that are on Twitter blue or only have them show up on their feed, which will actually help the bot problem in my opinion, because you can have these accounts that are being, that are bots that are trying to bot. And if we have our settings set to that, we won't be able to see it. So that would make my job easier and it would actually save me hundreds of dollars and my team's time instead of having to go through all of that stuff. So 
at this point, I am willing to accept any type of change to help with the bot program because <laughs> they're scary. They they post scam links, and if you click on that stuff, you can get your entire crypto wallet like hacked yeah. or Lord knows SIM swap. So I'm here for whatever. And shout out to CZ. Also, guys, I do own BNB. Full disclosure. 